Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning friends, we will be continuing the lateral directional case, we are trying to get interpretation via the roots of this characteristic equation and you know all this A, B, C, D, E, they can be easily computed once I know lateral directional dimensional derivatives and we have seen generally for most of the aircraft, you get routes like this. One is slowly convergent route, a real route, highly convergent, a real route, the negative sign, and slowly damped Dutch roll, it's like an oscillatory routes. We'll now try to use this equation or this matrix equation and take the determinant zero to find the characteristic equation A S4 plus B S Q plus C S square plus D S plus E equal to zero. We will now simplify this for spiral roll as well as Dutch roll mode and these are approximations. Mostly they are not very good approximations, but still it has got some relevance to the designers in an approximate manner. It helps a lot. So first we will try to do a roll or spiral, first we will do spiral approximation. Before we go for a spiral approximation, let us remember, before we go for a spiral approximation, please remember we found out a condition L beta n r minus n beta L r greater than 0. Remember this was from the condition E greater than 0. We said if E is greater than 0, then it will not suffer from any spiral mode divergence. Right. First of all, let us understand what is a spiral mode. It's the airplane, if there is a bank disturbance, the airplane goes to a side slip. As it side slips, if it is a stable airplane, directionally it turns like this. As it turns, there is a R, your rate, that will also give a moment, a rolling moment, because as it does like this, you could see from the vertical tail, it is pushing the air towards my left hand side, so it gets a force on the right hand side, so that also gives a rolling moment, which further banks the airplane, and then further there is a beta, further there will be turning. So, this sort of a combination will go on unless and until you have got C L beta, that is, as it banks and side slip and C L beta tries to recover it. Right? So, you see that the L beta where it is actually non-dimensional is C L beta and C L beta is less than 0. What is C L beta? C L beta is again bank, side slip and it tries to come like this. So, C L beta negative, N R you understand what is N R. In N R you have got C N R, it is a your damping, it is negative. Then N beta the C n beta for a directional stable air, airplane C n beta has to be greater than 0 and this is C l r and C l r you understand if the airplane is having a yaw rate like this, let us say if I try to explain you, if this is the vertical tail, this is the airplane is having a positive yaw rate like this, as it goes positive like this, this is pushing the air this direction it will experience the force in this direction and this force into the distance from the fuselage center line that will give me a rolling moment. So, vertical tail contribution to C L R is also positive. So, now it is not sufficient to know the signs what we need to design the airplane in such a way that this L beta into N R minus N beta into L R this should be greater than 0 that is important. Okay? 
So we understand who are the non-dimensional derivatives. They play the role. We also understand how do I change the CL value of CL beta. And I, if I increase vertical scale height, CL beta will increase. If I make it a high wing, CL beta will increase in negative sense. Like that, the designer I should know if I want to tweak this parameter, which are the design parameters I should change, which are geometric parameters I should change. So this should be very clear before you go for spiral approximation. And I again caution you that these approximations are generally not very good approximation. Still, they are good enough for a designer to get some feel for basic design parameters. So now we'll be talking about spiral approximation. Before we go for spiral approximation, please also understand that the aerodynamic force forces do not largely depend upon phi or psi. Please understand, we are, we are aware for normal case, the aerodynamic forces will not depend upon phi or psi. Right? Please understand, the aerodynamic forces do not depend upon phi and psi for normal case. It is a fair assumption to believe that aerodynamic forces aerodynamic forces depends on depend on phi dot psi dot and beta okay you can understand why phi dot you see if it is phi the aerodynamic force has nothing to do because the relative air speed okay that matter whether it's going like this going like this or going like this relative air is same. However, phi dot is this as there is a phi dot there is a relative air speed vertically up that gives you aerodynamic forces. Similarly, psi dot there is a rate. So, that will also give a induced beta which will give you forces aerodynamic forces. That is why it is important to first identify this and then if we now try to simplify which I am again cautioning you it is not a very good approximation, we have to incorporate this understanding into this matrix and remember instead of psi s, yes, we are telling the, the variable is psi dot. If it is the variable is psi dot, then naturally if I write it here psi dot, so 1 s will go from here which I have done last class and here this s will go and here also 1 s will go. Right? Because this into this, this into this, this into this. And also now what we do, we say phi, it does not matter with phi. So, this term into phi, this term into phi, this term into phi, this I drop this. Because phi is not relevant for us. What we are left with is this one, L beta into beta, this into psi dot, then n beta into beta, s minus n r into psi dot by ds. I am dropping this, I am dropping this, because I am saying in a spiral mode, what I am focusing is bank, side slip, this, further bank, this, like this. So, I am neglecting the effect of any force acting on the y direction. Again, this is the approximation. Right. I am more talking about the angular motion. Okay. So, this is also dropped as if it is taken care right? or not so important. This is an approximation because when I talk of spiral mode, I am talking about bank, side slip, this, further bank like this. And though there is a slight force will be in the y direction because beta is introduced transient manner, but we are neglecting that. Okay. So, we are having a smaller determinant which will be having a structure like this L beta S A 1 plus L R N beta S S minus N R this is equal to 0 that becomes my determinant that becomes my characteristic equation and if I do this if I now expand this I will find 
L beta into S minus NR, you see this one minus minus n beta into S A 1 plus L R this equal to 0 which gives me value of S as L beta N R minus N beta L R by L beta. Okay. And now you see to make sure that the spiral mode is convergent, not divergent. So, this man should be less than 0, right. Okay. And what is the sign of L beta? L beta you know as C L beta, right. It is constant into C L beta, C L beta rolling moment. And what is the sign of C L beta? C L beta is negative. So, for S less than 0, L beta into N R minus N beta into L R has to be greater than 0. Please understand this condition to be less than 0 and since this is negative, so this gives me a condition which already we have seen L beta N R minus N beta L R greater than 0. Okay. So, this also we are getting from first approximation, but the question comes, okay, it will tell you whether spiral mode is divergent or convergent, but how accurate it will be in terms of number. So, if we do an approximation with the data which we have used last example for this airplane, then you get the value of S as minus point zero zero six five, which means T S 1 by S minus. So, that will be 1 by 0 0.0065 and this is equal to 153.8 second, but exact solution was 991 second. Do you see how much different? Right. So, the, so when, once we try to talk about quantitative manner, this approximation does not give you a very good result, very far off result, but fundamentally as a designer it yields what we got from exact solution that E greater than 0, that L beta n r minus n beta l r greater than 0. Similar by this approximation also we got same result. So, that is the beauty of this approximation and that is the reason even if the numbers are not close, we still continue to understand that to get feel for the designer. Okay. So, this is the spiral approximation. Now, we will come to roll approximation. Now, we will talk about roll mode approximation and what is this roll mode approximation is if the airplane remember for lateral directional case we have identified there are three ways the airplane will get generally excited. One is spiral mode like this and that is roll mode right okay. Okay. and that is Dutch roll this three mode. Now, we are talking about roll mode that is if I give a disturbance in the aileron, how this aircraft is going to respond to this rolling moment disturbance right. What is the approximation done here is the assumption is if it is rolling like this, it is not affecting any motion in the y direction, no beta is introduced and no psi dot is introduced only phi one dimensional. Right. Okay. It is equivalent of thinking in a tunnel you are given a roll disturbance and it is trying to build or decay whatever it is. Right. If you are doing only one dimensional roll mode approximation, then you could easily see only you are keeping this. So, S square minus L P S into phi of S by delta of S equal to L delta A. All no yaw motion, no side slip motion, so only this one dimensional roll. So, I can write S square minus L P S into phi of S by delta now delta A is aileron input is equal to L delta A right or let me write it yeah L delta A 
I can write capital for clarity. L delta I. Now, if you see carefully, this I can easily write phi of s by delta a of s is equal to L delta a by s square minus L p s. So, you are expert now. The characteristic equation is s into s minus L p equal to 0. So, you have got s equal to 0 and s e and s equal to L p. S equal to 0, neutral stability as far as phi is concerned. I told you again and again whether the plane going phi 0, phi 10, phi 30, aerodynamically they are neutrally stable, there is no change. So, if forget that S equal to L p, it only suggests to you if L p is negative, it, is, it will have a first order response and it will be convergent response. And what is L p? L p you know is having C L p in its term and C L p is roll damping, roll damping which is less than 0. Just to recall, if this is a plane and if it is having a roll say p in like this, then at every station there will be relative air speed which will induce angle of attack as it is moving forward. So, where ulta will happen, reverse will happen here. This will give you a rolling moment like this. So, this is the roll damping because the rolling moment is proportional to the p for simple reason this induced velocity is proportional to p r bar which is at a distance r bar from here. So, this moment is proportional to the rate. So, you say this is roll damping. So, this is the important root I have got as long as this is negative it is convergent and now I need to solve this to find out what time history of phi. How do I do that? Let us do some numerical search on this expression with the roll mode approximation. This is roll mode approximation and once we solve that characteristic equation and put the values, we get s equal to minus 0 0.437 seconds and the T r is 1 of 1 by this. So, this is 2.29 seconds which is coming from approximation that is 1 d approximation. But the exact value was 1.972 second. You see, see that they are not that bad as spiral. Okay. Now the question is, if I want to know how this bank angle is developing, then if I, this is my transfer function phi of s by delta of s, I can always find out the time history by using a partial fractional method and you will find that from here I can write phi of t equal to minus L delta into delta by L p plus L delta into delta by L p square e to the power L p t minus 1. I am sure you know how to find out from this to time domain which we call inverse Laplace transform right which is straightforward. Once you get this you also know what will be the roll rate in frequency domain. Roll rate we have make an approximation p equal to phi dot. So, p of s equal to s phi of s right and phi of s expression is this phi of s is L delta I by s to s minus L p into delta of s. So, this is straight s phi of s that will be L delta A by S minus S minus L P and this is of course, delta A will be there delta A right. Okay. So, once I know P of S is S phi of S and phi of S expression already I know. So, this is my P of S. So, I can easily from again from frequency domain I can go to time domain by doing inverse Laplace transform. So, this will come out to be this. Okay. So, what are you seeing in this expression? The e to the power L p t, L p is what? Positive or negative? L p is negative. So, as time increases, this man will vanish. So, you will get a steady state value which is minus L delta into delta I by L p. Right. So, once you give an aileron input, 
it takes some time to go to a steady state value okay which is here clear so you can easily use this to find out the steady state values how much the airplane will respond for different types of aileron input this i am completing just to give you a little feel how to estimate approximately the response okay now we'll complete the last part which is the dutch roll mode physically what is it as we have agreed that airplane generally in lateral directional case can get excited into spiral roll and dutch roll naturally is primarily this this one is going on see you are going like this and also this motion right although there will be some bank disturbances but primarily this and this this is the dutch roll so you go like this okay and this uh, been approximated using keeping only this four term and with beta and psi no psi dot please understand okay and the determinant is typically we have scu1 minus y beta scu1 minus yr and here it is minus n beta s square minus s n r this is equal to zero okay because we have assumed that there are no phi disturbances so you could see any term with phi they anyway vanishes and all the second part which was primarily phi equation is also taken out these are approximations good or bad we will understand now and if i do like this i get a characteristic Characteristic equation as s s square minus s into n r plus y beta by u one plus y beta n r by u one plus n beta minus n beta y r by u one. let me check it is s square minus s into nr plus y beta by u1 plus y beta nr plus n beta so there will be bracket here okay that you can easily find out by doing this this and this right if this is again the characteristic equation for dutch roll mode approximation so let me write here approximation then you could see that s equal to 0 again it belongs to a neutral stability because the yawing motion again psi this way this way that way it is all aerodynamically similar so we forget that so we get again second order equation of the form mass spring damper system so you can easily use this and write omega n dutch roll as 1 by u1 into y beta nr plus n beta u1 minus n beta nr right and zeta dutch roll as minus 1 by 2 omega nd to nr plus y beta by u1 this you can directly find out from here because this is nothing but your omega n square now we will try to see how much we get in terms of numerical value of omega n d with approximation and zeta n d with approximation and we will see how they compare with the exact solution if you see omega nd we will get around 1.62 radian per second if you put the values and zeta you will get 0.058 this is the zeta value one thing is very clear from this approximate value also is a low frequency and zeta nd is 0.058 means weakly damped 
Okay. But what was the exact value? Let us check it. The exact value was exact was omega N D was one point six one eight and zeta as zero point zero three six. So you could see as far as omega is concerned, not that different, but zeta is also close, not that bad. But the problem what happens, you know, nowadays if the all the airplane there will be a lot of large value of I X Z and all cross derivative cross moment of inertia. In that case, this approximation is likely to fail very drastically. Okay. So, this I thought I will complete it because finally we are going for stability augmentation system. So, few things you should be clear that if I want to increase the Dutch roll damping as a designer, what do I do? This is y beta by u 1. So, I will not focus here. I will try to see how can I increase n r or how can I increase c n r okay? and how c n r can be changed by either changing the uh, distance from the vertical tail aerodynamic center to c g or the area of the vertical tail or tail volume ratio of the vertical tail. To have those ideas, uh, I thought we must complete this before you jump into stability augmentation system right thank you very much